This is Professor Capco. Welcome to the first in our series on bonds and bond valuation. In this first session, we're just going to talk about what a bond is and some general principles about how a bond is valued. In later videos, we'll get into calculating bond values and in what steps and techniques are used to do that. First of all, what is a bond? Well, a bond is evidence of a debt. It is a representation of ownership of that debt. So if you've got, say, a company that needs to raise money for some project, maybe they want to build a new factory or maybe they want to um, have some new equipment and they don't want to issue more stock. Stock, of course, would be ownership in the company. And for various reasons, maybe they don't want to issue more stock. Or maybe it's a government entity. They need to raise funds to build a new bridge or a new highway or a sports arena. And they, uh, and a, of course, a government entity does not issue stock. So it's going to issue bonds. Bonds are a way of borrowing money. So I'm going to represent that here, bonds. Bonds are a way of evidencing who owns that debt. So if you've got maybe a project that you're trying to raise $10 million for, instead of going to one bank, they could issue bonds to investors and pay interest to those investors as a way of inducing them to lend the money to them. And there's a couple terms that you're going to need to know. So the bond oftentimes is in um, $1,000 increments. Not always, but let's use that for our purposes of what we're doing. So that would be known as the face value of the bond or the par value of the bond, $1,000. Now, you could get the bond issued in a physical certificate. Sometimes they'll charge you some money to do so. Oftentimes the bond is just represented electronically as a lot of uh, securities are nowadays. But let's pretend we have a physical certificate just for the purposes of this. On the face of it, it would tell you that the value, the par value of this bond is $1,000. There's also an interest rate associated with the bond. And that would be represented right on the bond and in this case, just to make the math easy, we're just going to say it's a 10% interest rate. That would be known as the coupon rate. So we have the face value or par value of the bond is the $1,000. And then we have the coupon rate that the bond pays. And in this case, I'm using 10%. And the way to induce investors to lend the money to the company or the, or in the, some cases, a governmental entity in thousand dollar increments is this promise of 10% return. So in other words, over the life of the bond, the investor would receive 10% interest on their money. Plus at the end, which is known as the maturity date, they would receive their thousand dollars back. So, how does this come about? How, do, how does this work? Well, first of all, this 10% interest can be paid in several different ways. Number one, usually it's a stream of payments, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, maybe quarterly, depending on the type of bond. But all that would be done if this were paid yearly, for example, you would take the $1,000, that's the face value of the bond, and multiply it by the interest rate. Now, because 10% is an interest rate, we would turn it into a decimal by moving the decimal place over two. So we multiply it by 0.01. So that means that our payments that the investor would receive every year would be $100. They'd receive $100 per year. In this simple example, there's a lot more to it than this, 
but this is just to get you a start. So the investor would invest $1,000 in this case. They would receive 10%, which would be $100 a year. This is once a year they'd receive the payment in this example. And at the maturity of the bond, whatever it is, if it's a 10-year bond, a 15-year bond, a 30-year bond, they would then receive their $1,000 investment back. They would, the entity would pay off the debt. And that would be, um, the investor would then have all their money back, plus they'd earn interest on that time period. So that's in general how a bond would work. Now, there's a lot involved beyond that. That's just the simple process. Obviously, interest rates change over time. And as you're watching this video, interest rates may or may not be 10% for bonds. And those interest rates also are impacted by not only what the market rate is, in other words, what can an investor get with their investment? You know, if they invested in stocks, if they invested in mortgage-backed securities, if they invested in T-bills, or if they invested in certificates of deposit, or if they just put it in a savings account at the bank, those all offer different rates of return. So this may or may not be an attractive rate of return for an investor. And based upon that, we'll tell you whether or not the bond is going to sell for $1,000 or not. And we're going to talk about that later as to whether that rate of return will change the value of the bond. Another thing that would impact whether or not the 10% is a good indicator of what this bond is, should be paying would be how strong is the backing of this bond. If it is a governmental entity and it's backed by taxpayer funds, well, the chances are pretty good that the investor is going to get all of their money back plus the interest. So because of that, governmental entities often pay a lower interest rate than maybe a private company. If a private company is a decent company and is solidly backed, it may also pay a lower interest rate on its bonds. If a company is maybe a startup, or it is a company that has financial problems, it may have to pay a higher interest rate to induce somebody to invest in that company. So these are all things that would impact that interest rate and the coupon rate that's offered and the value of the bond on the market. Because once this money is invested into the bond, the person who invested in it owns this bond. And as I said, sometimes it's a certificate, sometimes it's just electronically recorded, that investor, in most cases, can sell that bond on the open market. And maybe they make a profit, maybe they take a loss, depending on how much they can sell it for. Seldom does it sell for exactly the face value. So we'll talk in more detail in some later videos about how to calculate what that bond should be selling for in the open market and what kind of calculations investors do to figure out what the bond price should be. As I said, those will be in later videos. If you are interested in um, getting a particular video made, you can put, you know, put something in the comments uh, and let me know what you would like to have a video made on. And also, if you need a video made sooner and for a specific question, you can sponsor a video. You can reach out to me and I'm going to put an email address in the description of this video. You can reach out to me by video, I mean by email, and sponsor a video, and uh, I'll make that and, and publish it in short order. So I appreciate your attention, and if you would um, go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to keep your grade alive. And until next time, this is Professor Capco.